Hey guys, welcome back to One Piece Banner Rush. Where today, guys, I am back with another opinion video to give you guys my thoughts and opinions about the newest characters that drop. Today is going to be on the new Bounty Fest characters, S Shark and Egghead Sanji. So, quick disclaimer before we get started. I want to tell you guys that my nose is a bit stuffy right now, so I might sound a little bit different to you. I'm not sick, don't worry. It's just, it's a bit stuffy. I'll probably be normal within like a day or so. So, without any further ado, <clears throat> let's hop right into it so i want to start off with egghead sanji because i mean it's a blue defender you guys know how i feel about my blue defenders i love blue defenders so yeah this guy is probably the best bounty fest defender in the game right now because this guy's traits are very good he he's a defender that can stack his defense and his defense stacking is probably the best in the entire game he increases defense every time you or an ally gets hit. You know how really, you know how good that is? That's very good. Like, you or your allies getting hit? Bro, your allies are going to be, like, going up the mid flag or your second flag to try to get it. And you could be at your base flag charging your flag out. And you're just getting your defense increases because they're all fighting and whatnot. You could be fully stacked out by the time you get up the mid flag, probably, depending on how much they're fighting. And you also get a skill 2 cooldown, too. Which skill 2 is most likely your one shot skill this skill hits really freaking hard it's a teleporting skill on top of that and this guy has the java effect where his skills are scaled off his defense so by the time you get out the mid flag not only are you tanky you're also going to be hitting really freaking hard on your skills so yes very good very good it was only the first trait so when Sans, this tray is like, eh, it's it's pretty good, I would say, but it's not crazy though. You know, you get a skill two cooldown, a speed boost when an enemy begins capturing one of your treasures, so you can try to stop them a bit sooner. You get knockback on your third hit, which I feel like most defenders nowadays need to stop these runners who can just ignore you and just grab your treasure. He resists stagger and be down to knockback and heal off eighty percent percent damage. When he's doing skill one, so Roger's combo study is not going to do anything against you when you're doing this. Although it is to be known that skill one is extremely short range. Like, he just does like a little kick forward and that's it. Like, whatever, whenever you're standing at when you release that button, that's where you're kicking. So it's really easy to avoid getting hit by this. But it's, the skill itself is really good. You, you heal a lot. 70% of the damage received. I don't really get what that means yet. I guess that means like when you're when when you're doing this skill and you're holding down the skill button, I'm assuming it means when you're getting hit and whatnot while you're holding it down, you're healing based off how much damage you, you know, tanked. So that can be pretty good if people are trying to take you out. It, well, it is skilled off your yeah, you heal off how much damage you received. Well, yeah, I don't yeah, I don't really get how that works. I'll probably have to see some gameplays and whatnot. Um, he resists stagger and knockback and nullify status effects inside your treasure area, which is amazing for defenders. He pretty that's pretty much just S snakes, but instead of any treasure area, it has to be your treasure area. He can charge the treasure gauge to 150%, and he also can ignore the enemy and refill the treasure gauge if it, if the, if his HP is above 70%, which really freaking good. This is a bounty fest character, and he has both of the defender traits, which is crazy. He increases defense, I mean, not defense, he increases attack by 300% when he is attacking a shield. You know Uta's little pumpkin shield she could put down? Yeah, he and he can destroy that shield in no time. So Uta is hard countered by this dude. And he reduced the MC by 50% too, if his HP is above 70% as well. So yeah, this dude is really tanky. Not only is he tanky, he can hit really freaking hard. He also he overall can just counter a majority of the meta characters. However, there is one character that can absolutely destroy you, and I'm sure many of you guys know what I'm talking about. Jabra. Jabra can absolutely destroy you since he, uh, he's blue. <laughs> you know he's blue. So yeah, I would definitely say be careful of Jabra. Try to avoid him if you can. This guy will annihilate you. Other than that, though, that's really about it. I think Roger could destroy you too if he plays smart, but. Other than that, yeah, Sanji, really good addition. In my opinion, that's the best Bounty Fest defender in the game right there. Now, let's talk about S-Shark. S-Shark, I don't think is as good as Egghead Sanji, but I do think he's a very good runner. Very good indeed. 
This guy is a counter to a snake, not only because he's the green element, but also because of his little trait right here that allows him to nullify um, perimeter reduction. So, you know, S snake's a little attack reduce thing when you hit by a skill. Yeah, he just nullifies that if his HP is above 70%. And he also get a bit of damage reduction, so he can be pretty tanky. On top of that, his skill one does fixed damage, so S snake is just going to take a bit of damage right there. That's 40% of her max HP, so this hits four times. And on top of that, this skill two increased damage against power users by 200%. So, mm, excuse me. So, yeah, any Devil Fruit users, if you're fighting S Shark, you're gonna be kinda, you're gonna be kinda struggling a bit, because this guy does so much, he gets a lot of benefits from fighting Devil Fruit users. And on top of that, not only is this guy like a really good overall runner who can fight, he's really good at like grabbing flags. Like, <clears throat> this guy gives immune free hits and nullifies status effects when he's grabbing your flag. So you can't just status effect him off the flag. You'll have to try to manually knock him off it. As I said, he gets benefits against Devil Fruit users, skill one cooldown, HP recovery. And he also has this thing that the Egghead Sanji has. If he's attacking a shield, like Uta's Pumpkin, skill one cooldown by 5% and you increase your attack by 30% for 10 seconds. Very, very good. When he's using skill 2, which keep in mind skill 2 is the swim skill, you know, think of Senior Pink skill 2, or, or is it skill 1? No, it's skill 1, I think. When he's doing that, not only is he resisting stagger being down and not back, he can be displayed on the mini-map. So that means backcapping. Oh, man. This dude is going to be a backcap king, man. Like, you won't see him on the mini-map. Very good. He's like Luchi in a way, I guess you can say. Um, he gets capture speed and resists stagger if allies are not in the treasure that you're at, which is good. I like that because you're most of the time as a runner, you're going to be by yourself. So this is a very good trait. Um, this is like the only problem I have with this Jimbe or S Shark, I guess you could call him. This is the only problem I have with him. He only nullifies status effects against the element that he's strong against. Now, granted, a lot of the blue characters in this game do hit you with some sort of status effects, like the brand new Egghead Sanji. He inflicts you with a flame. You know, S Snake inflicts you with Entrance. There's a lot of blue characters in the middle that inflict you with some sort of status effect. However, it doesn't take away the fact... Well, like, there's also dark characters you gotta take into consideration as well. But it doesn't change the fact that other elements can hit you with status effects like red, um, other green, and light elements. So, definitely be careful of those. But it's not too bad of a trait, though. I mean, it's, it's no fine status effects. At the end of the day, you gotta take what you can get. It's not like it's the worst thing in the world. At least he's nullifying something. And um, and lastly, he he gets a skill to cool down when he captures a treasure. A pretty basic runner trait. So, yeah... That's my opinion on these guys. If you want me like to rate these guys, I will give the Jimbe a 9.5 out of 10. Well, I'll give Sanji a probably a 9 out of 10, probably. Because, like I said, he's not like absolutely perfect. He's really freaking good. But I do think <clears throat> he's not like the... He's probably... So yeah, that's my honest opinions about these guys. If you guys want me to give me like a rating on these guys, I would definitely say that the S Shark, this guy is probably a solid 8.5 out of 10 or 9.5 out of 10. A very solid runner. While the Eka Sanji, yeah, you can call me biased for saying this, 10 out of 10. Amazing defender. Really good. Probably the best bounty defender in the entire game. Now, do I suggest you summon on these guys? Uh... If you want to, if you're a fan of S Shark, go ahead, or you're a fan of Sanji, go ahead. Go ahead, do what you want. However, do keep in mind that the 6th anniversary is right around the corner. I, I think it takes place in January, I believe. I could be wrong, somewhere around there. So yeah, do keep in mind that if you're summoning on these guys, you might have no Rainbow Diamond for the 6th anniversary that's coming up. So... Be smart with your rainbow diamonds, and yeah, that's all I have to say. As I said, both of these guys, really good addition to OPBR. Thank you guys for taking your time that you did to watch this video. If you didn't, if you did enjoy, make sure you smash like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. And I'll of course see you guys in the next video, alright? Peace out, everybody.